Now, what have you prepared about this? Tell me what you know about this music already. Yes. It's by Beethoven. It's by Beethoven. Good. Yes. What's your name? Matthew. Matthew. Thank you, Matthew. Yes. It has an ostinato. It has an ostinato. What's your name? Uh, Blair. Blair. Where is the ostinato, Blair? <laughs> Yeah, through the whole piece, that's exactly right. And what else do we know about this piece? It's old. It's old, that's right. It's even older than I am. Okay, so what's your name? Imogen. What were you going to say, Imogen? It's about 200 years old. Yeah, it was written in 1812-ish. And we can tell you pretty much for a fact that Beethoven was by now almost 100% deaf. He didn't actually hear this music. From about this symphony onwards, he didn't hear anything. And by the time he got to nine, he was completely and utterly stone deaf. He had no idea what was happening in the music. And this one was, this is a big turning point for his hearing. So can you imagine writing this extraordinary music and not hearing a note? And some of the theory is that's why he starts this movement low. Because on his piano in Vienna, he had boards that he used to tack onto the end of the piano, both ends. And when he played low notes on the piano, those boards would vibrate and he could feel those vibrations. You can actually see that. You can see where he nailed the boards to the piano. And you can also see the terrible things they put in his ears. He had ear trumpets that looked like the horns. And he had those stuck in his ear and he tried to listen to what was going on. He put the ear trumpet into the keyboard to try and hear. All of this music written by a deaf person. It's really... We often forget that when we play Beethoven. We often forget that most of the music he wrote he didn't hear. So, what did you notice generally about the music? What did you, what did you hear happening generally about the music? Yes. It's minor. Good. What's your name? Nishka. Nishka. It was minor. Thank you. What else about the music? Did you want to say something? Yes, here? Yeah? Yes? No. It, it kind of built up over time. Right. It built up over time. Very good. Yes? It had louds and soft. It had louds and soft. What's your name? Mishelda. Mishelda. Mishelda? Is that right? Yashoda. Yashoda. Did I get that right? Yep. Thank you, Yashoda. And what's your name? Vincent. Vincent, thank you. So it was very minor. It built up over time. It had louds and softs. Let's find out how he does that. Do you remember the first sound you heard? What was the first sound we heard? Yeah. yeah Oliver? The violins. The violins, okay. Listen to the first sound. Here's the first sound. The players who play the first sound. One, two. So who are they? The uh, brass. Which brass instruments? The horns. Horns. And who else was there? The woodwind. Yes. Let's just hear the woodwind. What's your name? Abby. Abby. Let's hear the woodwind just at the opening. Not the horns, just the woodwind. And? Okay. So are uh, all the woodwind playing? Do we hear all the woodwind there? Stand up, guys, because I know some of you can't see. Stand up. You can have a look right in here. This is where the wind are. Now let's have another look and another listen. And so which instruments has he left out, Oliver? The flutes. The flutes. Very good. Let's hear it with the horns. Here we go. So horns, add wind, and. Sit down. Thank you. Now, let's listen to the double basses play, their pattern. Here we go, basses, and. Thank you. What can we say about that pattern? Someone over here who's right next to the bass is over here, ladies. You're very close. Have you got something to say about the bass pattern? Sorry? The pattern stays the same, but the notes Right, the pattern stays the same, but the notes change. Let's see how long the pattern is. Here we go. Thank you, basses. 
and So, can we clap that pattern? Let's go. We're going to clap it, guys. And. The answer is yes, we can. Now, who can tell me the meter, the time signature? Lots of these players, the, lots of these boys and girls here, ladies of the orchestra, play wind instruments. Hands up all those who play instruments in this group in Goldman Street. Hands up. Look at that. So that's terrific. So what, what would you put for the time signature? Look. How many beats in the bar? Yes. Five. Five? Because it would go one, two, three, four, five. That's a really good thought. What's your name? Matthew. 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 Thank you, Matthew. But actually, while that's a really good thought, you watch what I do. I go, look. So what do you think? If you were watching and really listening and thinking, what am I really beating? Two. Two. What's your name? Dasha. Dasha. I'm beating two. Let's count how many bars of two the basses play. We're going to count how many bars of two the basses play. Here we go, basses. And one, two, on your own now. How many bars of two did the bass play, Dasha? Eight. Eight. Very good. Who agrees with Dasha? A wise person would. Now, this time, just to see if you're really counting, we're going to ask the cellos to play the pattern. Would you play, please, cellos, at bar three? And... What can you say about the cello pattern? What do you observe when you listen to the cello pattern? Yes. It's the same, um, it's the same pattern with the different notes. The same pattern with different notes. Very good. So the same as the bass but different notes. Now, what else can you say about the cellos? Yes, Oliver. It goes for the same time. It goes for the same time. Very good. So those who are really listening, that means everybody, put your hands up when we get to the fifth bar of the pattern. The fifth bar of the pattern. Here we go. And one. Very good. That was right. Absolutely right. Now, who else plays there? Is there anybody else playing there? Let's have a listen. Let's see what happens. If there's anybody else playing there in bar three. All the strings who play in bar three. And... So, who else is playing in bar three? Yes. Uh, violins. You're very close. What's your name? Sam. Sam. They're like violins. Would you stand up? We always get these friends to stand up because they're special. Okay. <laughs> they are, let me tell you, they are. It's called a? Viola. A viola. Thank you, Oliver. It's a viola. Now, let's listen to the viola pattern. And the question will be really obvious, but let's listen first. Thank you, aunt. So what do we notice about the viola pattern? Yes, Sam? It's slightly different. Slightly different. How is it different, Sam? Um, I think towards the end, I think it changes a little it bit. It does change towards the end, exactly. So let's listen to the violas again and put your hands up when the pattern changes. This requires very good listening. And. Well done, guys. That's very good. Now, there's something else about this that's a little bit special. Could we go, everybody, please, from bar 
11. 11. And when I do this, something happens to the music. When I put my hand up, have a really... I know you're doing good listening, but this will be extra good listening. Here we go. Bar 11 and... So what happened, Dasha? I think it got softer. It got softer. Who agrees with Dasha? The music got softer. Well done. Now we're going on. Seconds. Would you join us and play what you'd play at A? Listen to the violins. And. Sorry. And. What can we say about the violin tune? What can we say about, yes, Oliver? It's the same as the violas. It's the same as the viola tune, well done. So let's test that. So violas, would you play at the beginning? And seconds, you play at A. Here we go. And. So that test passes, doesn't it? Okay. As composers, grade five, writing music, Beethoven is telling us something. He's saying with a tiny, tiny idea of ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, if that's what you say, or ta, ta, te, ta, ta, you can make an entire piece of music work. Now, I'm going to ask everybody to play at A and tell me what you hear. This is everybody who plays at A and. So what do we hear now at A? When I just said letter A, that means there's somewhere in the music. You know what it means. You play in band. So what's happened to the music now? What's happened? Yes. Big, big voice. A melody, a melody right. Uh, what's your name? Maya. Maya. So who's playing that melody, Maya? Let's have a listen. Cellos, were you playing that melody? Here we go. And. So why aren't these two, why aren't Ivan and Sophie playing? Maybe they've got something different. Let's see what they do. And. What? So what are those cellos doing, guys? Yes, Oliver? They're playing the ostinato. They're playing the ostinato. They're playing the du, 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 du. Is there anybody else playing that with them? Let's have a listen. All this side, cellos, basses, and. Good, thank you. What do you notice about the ostinato now? Listen, I'll do it again, uh, just without the cellos. So, uh, cello done these two, thank you, and basses. And. What's happening there musically? Yes. You're taking out the first note. They've taken out the first note, correct. He's taken out the first note, and that has a really interesting effect on the music. Is there anybody else playing the tune? Everybody there today. And. Who else is playing the tune there? Oliver? The 
violas. The violas are playing the tune. And the violas, when you hear the violas and cellos together, it's so beautiful. Let's hear the violas alone. And. Now let's hear the cellos alone. Two beautiful sounds. Put those two beautiful sounds together. So when you're writing for instruments and you're composing for instruments, think about how different instruments will work together like that. Writing for two flutes or two clarinets. And these sounds are so beautiful. Beethoven teaches us such a lot about how terribly simple things can make really good music. Let's go to letter B. Let's see what happens at letter B. And. So what happens to the music now? What happened there at, when I said let it be? Something happened to the music. What did you hear? Yes. More instruments joined in. More instruments joined in. Which instruments joined in especially? I, yes. Did you want to say? No? Okay. Yes. The, the violins. The violins. Let's hear what the violins did. The top violins. And two. So where did that tune come from? The start. The start. So the tune has travelled. It went viola, second violin, first violin. But now listen to how clever Beethoven is. Let's have not the violins there, but the cellos and basses <laughs> are letter B. Here we go. And... So what's he done? What's he done to the music? Dasher, what do you reckon? Can we still hear bomb, 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 bomb? Not really. Not really. Not down here. So what's he done? What do you think? Yes, Ollie, what's he done? Moved it to the um, violas and violins. Let's see what the violas do. He's moved that over there, but let's see what the violas do at B. And one. So let's hear violas, cellos and basses at that very spot. And... Is the ostinato clear? Can we still hear the ostinato? What do you reckon? Nearly. 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 That's the answer. <laughs> Nearly is the answer. When the violins are here, we can absolutely hear. But what he's done is this, guys, and it's a brilliant idea. He's gone. At the beginning, he went, look. That's my idea, he said. We call that a motif. And then he said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go, rest. Rest. Now I'm going to go. And he splits it. So you hear the basses go do do dee da do do dee da, and you hear that idea going right through this lower section. Listen to the basses, just the basses, and and the violas and cellos fill that up with do dee da. Here we go, and bass, uh, violas, cellos, basses, and.
So you're right, Ollie, we nearly hear it, but it's really clear once the first come in. But what did the seconds do at B? Can we have the seconds at B? And. So what did the seconds do there? Yes. They get the melody, and who had it before them? They're over here. Yes, the viol is exactly right. So here we go, everybody at B, and then we'll go on. So we're going to move on. And when I go like this, guys, when I go, look, whoosh, what's happening there? Here we go, let it be. And. I put my hand up like that. What happened to the music? Yeah. Sam, yes? Um, did some of the brass and woodwind instruments join in? Yeah, let's check that, Sam. Let's have everybody at C, not strings. Everybody at C, but not strings. And. So. They did, didn't they? Yeah? And. The music built up. The music built up. Very good. What else? Yeah? Right, the violins kept jumping octaves. What else happened? Yes. It became louder. It became louder. Who, there's a special voice that comes in there right at that moment. And I'll give you a hint. It's not brass. Is it uh, percussion? It's not, what'd you say? Percussion. Percussion. Let's, what's your name? Noah. Noah. Let's hear the percussion. <laughs> What do you notice about his sounds? Ba yes. Um, one is the Good. Your what's your name? Matthew. Matthew. Let's do it again, please, Matt. Because his name is Matthew too. Here we go. And. What do you notice about those sounds, guys? Yes. One's higher than the other. Put your hands up when you hear the high sound. Here we go, the higher sound. And. We can sing those sounds. Here we go. And. La, 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 la. What else happened there at that point? What, what was happening over here in the cellos and basses? They were playing some of the ostinato. The was they were playing some of the ostinato. Well, I'll tell you what they were doing. They were having the best time. <laughs> Listen to this, guys. This is Beethoven. This, this man, Beethoven, was, in my view, an extraordinary inventor. And what made him extraordinary was his capacity to take the tiniest idea and keep building. So you remember how we started? Listen to what's happened over here. Seconds, violas, cellos and basses are letter C. And two.
That music rocks <laughs> in the best sense of the word. It really does. It's very beautiful. And it, you can feel it go, he loved those cross effects. And it's made even stronger when the winds say, no, dee, da, da, da. It goes like that. And they say, no, it doesn't. It goes, and then somebody wins. We got to play to see and find out who wins. Who wins this argument? And let us see. And. So what happens to the argument? What happens to the music? Maya, what happens? Sorry? Yeah, they pass it around and then what happens to the music? Sam? Um, I think the um, brass and woodwind change their pattern so it's more like the strings. Yeah, the brass and woodwind give up the argument a little bit a little bit, but if we ask the wind to play, at just before bar 100, let's go wind, could we go one, two, three before D? Three before D, and. Now we're gonna to listen to the very first chord of the piece. The very first chord, and. So the music, he comes back to the idea that he first started with, but he changes the idea and goes dee da da da. And this dudden dee dudden dee dudden dee. Listen what happens here at D. Listen to the dudden dee dudden dees. And what happens? And. So all this energy that came over here now moves over here and it becomes really calm and we hear all these beautiful tunes. And what are these people over here doing? Boom, 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 boom. They stay with the argument that they started. So when you're writing your music and that's why we learn music, we learn music so we can make our own music. That's why we do it at school. Not just playing instruments, that's wonderful, we love playing instruments. Singing, we love singing, that's all really important. But the most important thing is making your own. So you can take ideas of Beethoven's and turn them around, that little pattern. Bomb, 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 bomb. That could be a fifth grade assignment. What can you do with that pattern for percussion or wind 
or strings and make your own peace based on what Beethoven would do. Would that be a good thing to do, Noah? Yes, it would be. I can assure you. It would be a very good thing to do. And to play it for each other. Let's give the orchestra a big clap for playing the Beethoven so beautifully. Thanks, guys.